They created a monster, half plane, half boat, a Soviet secret discovered accidentally by Western intelligence, a technical gamble that the experts said would not work. They were wrong, so wrong that this secret may well lead to a transport revolution. Ride the Caspian Sea Monster tonight at 9 on 4. But in this new commercial marketplace, the Russians have found that they are no longer alone. If they are going to corner the market, they're going to have to beat off some very strong competition. Hanno Fischer, an engineer and pilot from Duisburg, is also racing to exploit the commercial benefits of ground effect flight. What we try is to fill the gap between the slow and inexpensive ship transport sea transport, and the fast but very expensive air transport. There's a big gap. All winging ground effect craft have a very specific set of technical criteria which have to be addressed. With an eye always to commercial application, Fisher's approach differs sharply from the Russians. This is most obvious in his approach to the fundamental danger that exists for all ground effect craft. The wing has a tendency to move up or to pitch up. You know it from fast boats, race cars. They have also always these accidents, they say, on pitch up, go vertical, and this is a big problem to stabilize a wing in ground effect. The major problem of getting in and out of ground effect is a change in trim on the aeroplane. The point at which the lift actually acts on the aeroplane actually moves as you move into ground effect. It actually moves rearward, backwards, uh, towards the back of the aeroplane. That means the trim of the aeroplane is, is, is changed, the balance between weight and lift is no longer what it was, and as a result, the pilot has to make some quite violent trim changes in order to keep the aeroplane on an even keel. This was why Chi-M was so full of technical equipment. Flying over the constantly changing surface of the sea at 350 miles an hour, no pilot would be able to react quickly enough to keep the wings in ground effect. Every wave trough could risk the huge craft bearing skywards. What I don't like is that they have not a natural stability. The stability is controlled by an automatic system, like an autopilot. When this doesn't work and you are only three meters high, the risk is high. So we say we need natural stability. Fischer's solution is based on the work of the great German engineer, Dr. Alexander Lippisch. Lippisch's work with Messerschmitt during the Second World War led him to design the delta wing shape. Although this shape was designed for high speed stability in free air, when reversed, it proved to be stable in ground effect. This discovery led to Lippisch's first ground effect trials in 1962 using the reverse delta wing shape, a craft called the X-112. This was the first craft uh, which runs in ground effect stable. And he installed a T-tail, so the tail is flying out of ground effect. And this combination between a wing in ground effect and a tail which is out of ground effect in a certain distance and certain height, this uh, is a secret to stabilize such a craft. Fisher's approach to ground effect is called the airfish. We have flown hands up, not touching the controls. They had run it half an hour and it stabilized automatically. And you come closer to the ground, the lift go up and it come back to the previous altitude. So we learned mainly thanks to Lippisch to stabilize a wing in ground effect. By comparison, the Russian craft is a very complex piece of engineering. 
With its high-tech background, the Volva II appears to have inherited all the complexities of the giant Chi M. While the Airfish is a simpler and more elegant design, it still carries all the trappings of an aircraft. But there is yet another approach to ground effect, all these which is simplicity. Supported by aerodynamic lift. But before you have enough aerodynamic li lift, you need a certain speed. So you ha have to run through the water, and water is 800 times thicker than air. So you need a lot of power, roughly three times of the power which you need in ground effect, right? To overcome the high drag, we call it hump drag. Because winging ground effect craft have very small wings that don't generate a great deal of lift at low speeds, Takeoff requires a massive amount of power to get them out of the water. Alexiev's solution to the problem was to position engines in front of the wings, using the thrust as a lifting force. Whereas this does have the advantage of making craft amphibious, it is hardly an elegant engineering solution, requiring large amounts of brute force. In the case of the Chi M, eight of the ten engines were only used for takeoff and were carried as baggage for the rest of the trip. It is here that York's tandem is at the mercy of even the slightest sea condition. The craft requires a forward speed of nearly 50 miles per hour before it will climb out of the water, and like an aircraft, this has to be into the wind, which means it's also into the waves. Despite conditions that clearly aren't troubling even the smallest of conventional craft, the flare boat is having trouble getting airborne. This highlights a fundamental problem with craft that try to take off from water. It is here that Fisher's newest craft has the commercial edge on all others. This is the hover wing, Fisher's new design for the future of winging ground effect travel. With Lippisch designed wings and tail, it has a patented takeoff system. We tried to find a solution to reduce the wetted area. So we installed a propeller on the pylon, and the pylon has a door which we can open and close. Roughly 7% of the slipstream we catch and bring it between the two catamarans here, and we have a skirt in front and in the rear so that we build up a static air cushion. This static air cushion is so strong that it lifts up already 80% of the weight of the craft. So we don't run anymore through the water, we are already above the water. I'm absolutely sure that this is the answer. When, we look, when you look to all the technology in the history, always the fastest craft has replaced the slower one. We have more than 700 harbors around the Baltic Sea, which we can use, but we have only 10 airports. So we can just fill the gap between these two uh, vehicles, ship, and aircraft. There's an Illustrated Channel 4 booklet that tells you much more about these amazing machines. For a copy, just send a cheque or postal order for £4, payable to Channel 4, to Equinox, Ecrano Plan, P.O. Box 4000, Manchester M60 3LL. And next week, Equinox unravels the mystery of a 9,000-year-old skeleton that's opened up a can of worms in America.